doing, Jason? How you doing? I'm doing well. Just got off a call with a customer, and you know what's really interesting is all of these people talk about the same challenges. They're leading their organizations through a digital transformation, and their infrastructure can't meet the demands associated with new applications. Yeah, so really everybody's trying to leverage technology to deliver on the business values, using automation to deliver things like agility and adaptability to the organization. Exactly, and to innovate, people need to experiment. So that means reducing friction associated with deploying new applications and new workloads. That puts a strain on the infrastructure in terms of unpredictability and other challenges because workloads now demand the performance of bare metal. Right, so we need to deliver uh, the ability for companies to innovate, flexibility, and at the end of the day, raw horsepower. And we can't forget about cost. So frankly, getting one of these right is tough enough. Trying to deliver on all of them is really difficult. I couldn't agree more. If we go back to flexibility, one of the things that people, one of the reasons people view infrastructure as inflexible is resources are marooned across the data center. The net effect is poor utilization of a lot of expensive assets and the need to maintain inventories of different hardware configurations for spikes and spares. And if you're a service provider, which pretty much everybody is, that adds up to a lot of money. Right. So uh, one of the things people are turning to right now is SAN and NAS, because those things are both very flexible. But they're also a bit long in the tooth, and you end up compromising on scale and performance. So even more recently, people have turned to HCI, hyperconverged infrastructure, where we put local storage inside the compute nodes and rely on software for things like uh, data protection, other data services. Right, and people love HCI because it consolidates everything down onto a single Ethernet fabric. There's no need for fiber channel or anything separate. Right, of course, the problem with HCI is you end up compromising on performance. And really what we want is the best of both worlds. We want bare metal performance, and we want the flexibility traditionally associated with virtualization. Right, right, and with the efficiency that one would think of for hyperscalers, but they want that same efficiency in their own data center. That seems like that's gonna be quite a challenge. So one of the ways people are accomplishing this today is by deploying services like data protection, network overlays, and other things in software. We really need these services to ensure that the workloads that we're running and the data that those workloads use is safe and available. Uh, it gives us flexibility, but at the end of the day, we're putting a huge burden on the CPU to actually provide these services. Right, and those CPU cycles are essentially wasted on those services. So the bean counters have to be very happy with the software licensing that comes in core count or CPU socket. That's wasted money. Yeah, and then at the end of the day, again, uh, you're still not getting the performance that you need, uh, especially for newer workload styles like big data, AI, ML, uh, containers. Um, all of those systems really want bare metal performance without the penalty of the hypervisor. Uh, but they fail to deliver on that flexibility, and at the end of the day, bare metal is hard to manage. Okay, so we're back to a bunch of unpalatable compromises. I have to sense that there's got to be a better way. That's actually exactly what we're working on here at Fungible. We want to level the playing field between on-prem data centers and what you can see in the public cloud, so that businesses actually have a real choice between on-prem and the cloud. That's pretty exciting. I think we're going to want to talk more about that. I think we will.